was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears in the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverence. Son though he was, he learned obedience from what is suffered. And he was made perfect. He became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. The word of the Lord. Save me, O Lord, in your kindness. In you, O Lord, I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your justice, rescue me. Make haste to deliver me. Save me, Lord, in your kindness. Be my rock and refuge, a stronghold to give me safety. You are my rock and my fortress. For your name's sake, you will lead and guide me. Save me, O Lord, in your kindness. You will free me from the snare they set for me, for you are my refuge. Into your hands I commend my spirit. You will redeem me, O Lord, O faithful God. Save me, O Lord, in your kindness. But my trust is in you, O Lord. I say, you are my God. In your hands is my destiny. Rescue me from the clutches of my enemies. Save me, O Lord, in your kindness. How great is your goodness, O Lord, which you have in store for those who fear you, and which, towards those who take refuge in you, you show in the sight of your children of men. Save me, O Lord, in your kindness. Yeah. Alleluia. Blessed are you, O Virgin Mary. Without dying, you won the martyr's crown beneath the cross of the Lord. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Saint Luke. Jesus' father and mother were amazed at what was said about him. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rise of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will co be contradicted. And you yourself, a sword will pierce, so that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning. Good morning. Today we celebrate the memorial of the Mother of Sorrows. Anyone here whose name is Dolores? Who is Dolores? Oh, you are? Oh, your middle name. So you're, what's your first name again? Tess, Teresa? Teresa Dolores. Wow. Anyone else whose name is Dolores? Dolores? But I can see pain in your eyes. You're full of sorrows. Huh? <laughs> you may have a nice name, but you must be in pain, in sorrow, isn't it? Dolores, meaning sorrows. So, Mother of Sorrows, Our Lady of Sorrows, Mother of Dolores, Our Lady of Dolores, and many other titles of Mary, which simply reflect the kind of mother that she was and she is. Remember the seven sorrows of Mary? The first sorrow was when Simeon, the prophet, when they presented Jesus to the temple, there were two Prophets there, prophetess and prophets, Anna and Simeon. And Simeon, as in our gospel today, said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rise of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be contradicted, and you yourself, 
a sword will pierce so that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. And then, of course, the second sorrow is the flight, the flight to Egypt. When Mary you know, gave birth to Jesus in Nazareth, in Bethlehem, the angel told them and Joseph that you are supposed to go to, you go to Egypt because Herod is looking for the child to kill the child. It must have pained Mary, not the flight to Egypt, but rather what was promised to her by the angel. Remember that angel who came? You will bear a son and your son will be the king and his kingdom will last forever. But it seems that the kingdom is about to end. When Herod is about to, you know, take notice of this king, he would like to kill the baby. It seems that the kingdom will not last. So the flight to Egypt, of course, was painful because you have to endure the travel in the desert, in the night, full of uncertainty and anxiety. And then after that, when Jesus was growing up, she got lost in the temple so for three days. So the pain of a mother, you know, wanting to keep the baby or her child, that she will not be harmed or anything like that, much more so to get lost in three days. In Jerusalem, the center of, you know, of everything, happening so many activities and you have people getting lost and then of course she was found but that pained her as a mother and then when Jesus was finally condemned to die and carried the cross and Mary met him while carrying the cross have you seen the movie Passion of the Christ? Have you seen that? I like that part in the movie when Jesus was a young was a young boy and Mary was with him although a little bit away and just like a mother ever watchful of a child while she was doing her own you know business as a mother taking care of the house but her eyes is always watchful to her child, Jesus, while playing on the ground. And then the baby boy, I mean the child, I don't know how old was she then. She, he fell to the ground. And immediately Mary coming from this side of the yard, ran towards him and said, I am here. I am here to comfort and to take away the fear from that child. When Jesus was carrying the cross on the streets of, you know, the Via Dolorosa in Jerusalem, Mary was on the side, just simply walking with the rest of the people, simply watching the son who is now an adult carrying the cross. And then when Jesus fell, you know, carrying the cross, I don't know, maybe the second time or the first time, the third time that he fell, Mary was there and she rushed towards Jesus and said the same words, I am here. Remember the Words also of Our Lady of Guadalupe to Juan Diego. He said, am I not your mother? And I am here for you. Those are words that we should always remember also. And so at the crucifixion, when Jesus was being nailed on the cross, if you have seen that movie once again, you must have noticed Mary just standing by, 
not close, not too far, just enough to see and be heard by her son. Those words, I am here. Words of a mother to her son who is now, you know, suffering in pain. And then finally, you know, when Jesus was hanging on the cross, she remained, but not saying anything, without protest, without shouting anything. Not even saying, why, why, why? Because she knew deep in her heart when she said yes to the angel, yes, I would like to be the mother of the Savior, she knew already that all of these things will happen. But of course, it's a different story when it is actually happening and you're experiencing it. Isn't it, mothers? It's good to have a child. You dream about being a mother, bearing a son or a child in your womb. I will become a mother. How excited you are. And then through the pain, you know, as they say, when a mother gives birth to a child, one half of his, her body, one foot is in the grave and one foot is on the table where she is delivering. You could experience that as a mother. So you knew exactly how it is to be a mother. Much more so with Mary, looking at Jesus hanging on the cross, bleeding, gasping for breath, just waiting to die. Crucifixion. And as we, you know, we said yesterday when we had a memorial of the exaltation of the cross, it was a moment of shame for the Lord. It was a moment of embarrassment for Mary, the mother. Try to imagine the mother there watching the son hanging on the cross without any coverings. As a mother, she would have run and then put clothes on her son. But she could not do that. She took everything to heart and then believe in what the angel told her. She will become the Savior, the Redeemer. You will name him Jesus because he will save his people. But maybe for Mary, not this way. Why would the son, my son, whom I bear or born for nine months and almost died and then we have to fly to go to Egypt in the middle of the night and now here I am helpless I cannot do anything he's supposed to be the savior to save me but as a mother I could not save him from shame from embarrassment Much more so when Jesus was taken down the cross. Isn't it? That's number what? Number? Number, number one? Number six. When Jesus was taken down from the cross, Mary was there. And that is why we have this beautiful pieta, you know, inside the church. Have you seen that? The Pieta, the mother of Pieta, the mother of piety, that's what it is. Piety, Pieta, the mother of sorrows, the mother of dolores, dolors. And the Pieta tells us that the mother was there carrying the lifeless body of her son. Again, repeating what she said to Jesus when she fell down as a when he fell down on the ground as a boy, I am here. And while carrying the cross, I am here. And while hanging on the cross, I am here. And now lifeless, the mother of sorrows, 
is saying in that image of the Pieta, I am here. Those are words that we, we should remind ourselves of the Blessed Mother. The Blessed Mother is truly a mother who cares. So even if you're a sinful person, even if you have committed the most worst sin in the world, if you approach the mother, she will not reject you. So what's the point of being afraid and ashamed and embarrassed? Just be joyful and be happy. Because we have a mother who cares, who always will say to you, in your ears, in your heart, I am here. How many mothers can do that nowadays? I hope if you're a mother here today, you're able to do that to your children or to your child. That no matter how bad or how undisciplined or stubborn your child is, you remain a mother Remember, there is no other mother in the world other than you. Yes, many, many women can become a mother by simply giving out a child from their womb. But you are the mother of this child. So do that and be that. Because that is your calling. That is your mission in the world. Although there are many mothers... But you are that mother to your child, no one else. Remember, you're the only mother. Even if you go to China, there is no other one like you. Even if you go to Afghanistan, even if you go to Israel, there is no other mother other than you to your child right now. So if you don't like your child, wow. Reflect. And meditate on your being a mother called by God to bear a son into the, or child into this world so that life will continue. So that the grace of life from God will continue to overflow the world. Mother of sorrows. You may not have the same sorrow as the mother, Mary. But you, I know for sure, you have had your own sorrows. But again, be like Mary. I am here. So no matter how in undisciplined or how stubborn, hard-headed your child is, do not condemn that child. You are the mother of that child. That child came into this world through you because you were called to be the mother of that child. God did not call somebody from Afghanistan to be the mother of your child, nor called somebody from China to be the mother of your child. You are the mother of the child. And like Mary, you may experience sorrows, but her as a mother is always reminding us, I am here. Now be that to your children. Because there's no point in praying to God if deep inside your heart, you're stubborn also. You're hard-headed also. You cannot forgive and you cannot be humble. So if you cannot accept that role, being a mother to your child, then what's the point? You ask God to help you, but you're not helping yourself. You ask God to forgive you, but you're not forgiving yourself. Delia? Huh? Are you dreaming already? That's the point. That's the point. That's why when you go to confession, you always say, my child... Stubborn, hard-headed. It's not a question of discipline. It's a question of loving. Are you a loving mother? Then be that loving mother. You might say, oh, you can only say that, Father, because you're not a mother. Of course, I'm not a mother. 
But I have a mother. She already passed away, and there were eight of us, and I'm the eldest. Eight of us. Some of you only have two, one. We were eight, and my mother stayed home. My dad is the only one earning for us. And believe it or not, all eight of us went through college in universities and colleges, which are not really, you know, which are quite expensive. But my father and mother did what God had asked them to do. They knew that a child is simply entrusted to you. They're not yours. The life that your child has is from God, not yours. You're just a vessel. A vessel, a container for that grace of God. Just like Mary was just, she knew she was just a vessel. God needed her. God needed a vessel on which to place the Savior, the Son of God. And that is why, like a regular mother, it pains Mary, really, to see everything happening to, to her child. Remember that song in, during Christmas time? Mary, did you know that the child in your womb is the one who will save you? She understood what the angel told her. She's going to bear the child of God because that same child is the one who will save her in the end. And that is why for us, you who are mothers, no matter how difficult it must be for you, bear in mind, bear in mind, you're just simply called to be God's instrument to bring life into this world. And so therefore, be like Mary, seeing all these things happening before her eyes, and she can always say, I am here. And so, of course, when Jesus was buried, the burial of Jesus, which is the number seven, pain and sorrows of Mary, when she, was, she could not do anything. You know how many burials and funerals I have seen, and I've seen mothers crying. Of course. You know, it's their child, it's their son, it's their daughter. It pains them so much to lose a child, to lose somebody. Much more so during this time, when a lot of families are losing you know, their children because somebody has killed them. Unfortunately, that pains everyone so much. And that is why we pray to the Blessed Mother, not so we can bear the pain, but rather we pray to the Blessed Mother that her heart, sorrowful heart, will be trans translated will be transmitted into the hearts of those people who dare to do bad things. So we pray that these bad things happening around us will come to an end. Not to ease the pain, but rather that people will have the heart of a mother that says, I am here. A caring, loving heart of a mother, although full of sorrows just like many mothers today. Amen? Please stand and let us now offer our prayers. For the church, serve as a beacon of reconciliation leading others in the ways of harmony and peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. That the leaders of nations will courageously seek reconciliation and peace 
We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For those who are facing challenges of health and despair, may they find strength and consolation through the prayers of this parish community. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. That the members of this assembly mirror God's mercy in the way they care for one another, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Let us pray together with our patron, St. Catherine of Siena, for all our petitions, for the intentions of Evelyn Valdez, Joe Luero, and Jorge Garduno. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Loving Mother, teach us how to love. Teach us to love even in the midst of our sorrows and pains. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive a merciful God to the praise of your name, the prayers and sacrificial offerings which we bring to you as we venerate the Blessed Virgin Mary, whom you graciously gave to us as a most devoted mother when she stood by the cross of Jesus, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, and to praise, bless, and glorify your name on this day of the Blessed Mother. For by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, she conceived your only begotten Son, and without losing the glory of virginity, brought forth into the world the eternal light, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim Worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. May call it therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Receive the prayers and intentions we offer, especially for the intentions of St. Catherine of Siena School. Receive the prayers of Evelyn Valdez, Joe Luero, Jorge Garduno. Receive our prayers for the intentions of Stephanie Milka, Marge Potter. Jenny Braun, Elizabeth Cruz, Gina Fuentes, Senaida Lozano, for Divina Blanco Nitiprapa, Jaime and May Mauhai. We pray for Jamie Contreras, Saprian Benedicto, Jose and Isabel Hortado. Victor and Monica Enriquez, for Alfredo Estepona, for the Pasculado family, Taina Miklat and family. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. We pray for Edgardo Buhay, Amparo Palma, Celestina Fernandez, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, with Saint Catherine of Siena, Saint Pio Pietrelcina, Saint Peregrine, Saint Faustina, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you to your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. 
The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Having received the sacrament of eternal redemption, we humbly ask, O Lord, that honoring how the Blessed Virgin Mary suffered with her Son, we may complete in ourselves for the Church's sake what is lacking in the sufferings of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The prayer to Our Lady of Sorrows. Our Mother of Sorrows, with strength from above, you stood by the cross, sharing the sufferings of Jesus, and with tender care, you bore him in your arms, mourning and weeping. We praise you for your faith, which accepted the life God had planned for you. We praise you for your hope, which trusted that God would do great things in you. We praise you for your love in bearing with Jesus the sorrows of his passion. Holy Mary, may we follow your example and stand by all your children who need comfort and love. Mother of God, stand by us in our trials and care for us in our many needs. Pray for us now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Let us pray for all the mothers who are in pain or hurting because of the pains inflicted upon their hearts by their children. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Let us pray for healing, the healing of minds and hearts and of physical bodies, that the Lord, through the intercession of our Blessed Mother, will come upon them and heal them and bring about comfort and solace in the hearts and minds and bodies of those people. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. O Most Holy Virgin Mary, pray for us. Sacred Heart of Jesus, Saint Catherine, Our Lady of Sorrows, Saint Padre Pio, the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us all go in peace to love and serve the Lord. When you do your novena today, pray for all the mothers. For all the mothers who are struggling in their relationships, especially with their children. Pray that they remember that they are just instruments of God to bring life into this world. And when they said yes to that, out of excitement to be a mother and to be pregnant, then they should remain excited until the end, no matter how painful it is. You're a mother, I'm not, but I saw the sufferings of my own mother. So, be a good mother. Because you are still a mother, whether you like it or not. Whether you, your children have grown already and have left you alone in the house. You are still a mother before God. You cannot deny that, and you cannot escape that. And so therefore, just like the Blessed Mother, Virgin Mary, she has to go through all those sorrows and pains. But always what comes out of her mouth is what is in her heart. I am here. The same words of the Our Lady of Guadalupe. Am I not your mother? I am here. Amen. Amen. Let us sing our final hymn.